Local government reform about to go to the next phase. Hundreds of public servants to attend a solidarity rally over government's latest offer of a wage freeze and a call for farmers to maintain top quality production as government negotiates a supply contract for the Martinic market. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. First stop, the process towards local government reform is expected to move on to another stage. Edona John Baptist has more. The plan to transform the local government system has been in the making for more than 10 years. The launch of a consultancy in 2006 with technical support provided by the Caribbean Development Bank was a major step in that process. Local Government Commissioner John Fontaine told Channel 5 News he is happy about a recent development which indicates that local government reform is on the front burner. We have had the discussion with the consultant. The consultant completed his work and um, a presentation was made to the senior members of the Ministry of Social Services and the Minister. So now the process is to present a, a cabinet paper to, to cabinet and to get a date for presentation there. And um, going forward, cabinet will decide um, what are the recommendations that will go forward and that will give us a roadmap to follow. Personally, I'm looking forward to that. A key element of the reform is to allow local government authorities to have more independence. We're looking at strengthening the, the financial arrangements of councils. We're looking at membership. We're looking at um, 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 governance. And so the question of public servants hopefully serving uh, on, on local authorities as nominated members. And that, that already exists, but only at the, um, at the Canefield Urban Council. It's a new local authority as compared to village councils and the municipal councils and the Kalinago Council. And so we were able to, to t take that on board. The recommendation for public servants to be allowed to serve on village councils is expected to boost the capacity of local government bodies. Fontaine hopes the authorities can consider aspects of the Kalinago Council as a model for the entire local government system. The Kalinago Council has about five unique features. First of all, it has a five-year term. There are two elections, one for chief, which is the chairman, and one for the other members. Another feature is that they are all elected. Another feature is that there's an odd number, seven members. Uh, and so it would cut some of the problems that we are having when we have um, selection of chair and the tie in 4-4 and um, our recent um, issues that we have. Mm -hmm. So when this, all this thing goes to cabinet, there will be debate, you know, and at the end, hopefully we will get a number of recommendations that we can work with. More lead stories now. Hundreds of public servants expected to attend what the Public Service Union is calling a solidarity rally to update its membership on government's recent wage freeze offer. General Secretary of the Public Service Union says Thursday's event to take place at the PSU building is meant to create renewed interest in the work of the PSU. We will use the opportunity to really give our members a briefing of the status of salary negotiations and mark UIC salary negotiations because we'll be reporting on all the areas where we are negotiating, not only public um, service, but also at DASPA, at um, the WASC, um, um, solid waste management and a number of other institutions, Dominica state lot lotteries and so on and so forth. We want our members to understand that what affects one affects all. So if we have a problem in the public service, for example, with government employees, we want those at the WASCO, we want those at Solid Waste Management, we want the people at DASPA to understand it is everybody's concern. The executive of the PSU met with the government negotiating team over a month ago on its offer resalary negotiations. Later says they have since responded to government's counter-proposal. In terms of um, salary negotiations, we have made some progress. As a matter of fact, we have concluded some negotiations and uh, others we are still negotiating and uh, we will be giving some information. Um, I can just make a general statement and state that in terms of what is being offered to the people who we are representing, that is the general, generally, we are not satisfied with what is being proposed. 
At this point, we want to say that a wage freeze just doesn't make sense to us. I do not want to be too specific because um, we are always accused of negotiating through the media, but we only use the media to really bring information to our members. So it's not a matter of we are negotiating, but I can say that um, what is being offered, we are not in favor, and that is a wage freeze for three years. There is no way that we are going to accept a wage freeze for three years. On to agriculture now, where Minister Johnson Drago has advised farmers to maintain top quality produce for export. Drago spoke recently at a town hall in La Plaine. Our farmers are not consistent with what the market demands. And there are several reasons for that. The quality of the produce that we send out of Dominica today cannot be in the same way you used to do it 15 and 10 years ago. I recall seeing a van passing or a truck heading to the port with a load of planting, planting on planting, and the tiny of a rope again passing over and tight, tight, and so on. Head into the port, whether it's Portsmouth or Rose. We used to get away with those things. But today, the market demands quality. He warned that new trade rules places an emphasis on quality and the government is negotiating a supply contract for the Martinique market. Going forward, we've been discussing with a special supermarket in Martinique who is going to be requiring six commodities, dashing, yams, tanniers, potatoes, cucumbers, and um, ginger to produce for a contract for that market. And we do not anticipate that if somebody in, in La Plaine goes into pro, um, providing cucumbers for that market, we do not anticipate that you will do like you have been doing in the past, sell it to the highest bidder. We we'll expect you to stick to this market. And commuters on the West Coast resorted to using the old factory bridge at Makushri on Saturday after river flooding damaged the Billy Bridge there. A flash flood warning was in effect for Dominica on Saturday. We have been experiencing isolated, we had been experiencing isolated heavy showers across Dominica since Wednesday. The river flooding was triggered by the heavy showers on Saturday morning, particularly in the interior. Back in December 2016, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Public Works, Kendall Johnson, reassured the public that the bridge was in no immediate danger of a catastrophic failure. The Billy Bridge is among four given as a gift from the Vincentian government in the wake of Tropical Storm Erica. You're watching Channel 5 News. Back with more after this. This is Channel 5 News. Government's seriousness about agricultural development here is reflected in what the Permanent Secretary says is a huge budget. While he did not give any figures, Harold Geist estimates that government financially supports 70% of the country's agricultural production. Geist told a visiting group of agriculture students from the University of Trinidad and Tobago on Monday, government has stepped in because of financial and other challenges such as the black cigatooka disease, which largely affects bananas. This is a crippling disease. And Dominica has expended millions of dollars to try to control and manage this epidemic. And we are making some headway, but we still have a ways to go. Gis says for the first time, Dominica is now in a situation where it has no protection on the international market for any crop. We used to have, before WTO came and put all these rules, we used to have protection on the, on the UK market for bananas. This protection is gone. And therefore, we are, we are on the playing field, like everybody else, but the playing field is not level. We are in a situation where we do not have any single crop that leverages the economies of scale that we need to be able to stand on our feet and say, well, we have this monocrop economy. It's not like that anymore. It used to be when banana used to be king. But banana is no longer king. And therefore, we, what we have done as a strategy is to diversify. 
He believes the training provided by the Eastern Caribbean Institute of Agriculture and Forestry has and continues to make a significant contribution to Dominica's human resource capacity in agriculture. To the courts now, where the long-awaited trial of Kelvin Alexander of Granby has suffered yet another minor setback. Alexander's trial for aggravated burglary and theft over, of over $218,000 from Western Union in February 2012 was previously set to begin last week and later pushed back to Monday. But when the matter came up before the court on Monday, attorney at law Joshua Francis told the court he had a discussion with Alexander and wanted to be removed from the matter. The court granted his request. A nine-member jury has been impaneled and the trial is set to get underway on Wednesday. Don Yearwood Stewart and Wayne Nordy have agreed to assist Alexander in the matter. And Dominica's only above-knee double amputee has finally left the island for his prosthetics and therapy in France. 32-year-old Dion Green had both legs amputated above the knee in 2000, approximately three years after he suffered a second and third degree burns from an explosion. Through the efforts of the Dominica Association of Persons with Disabilities, the Keep Walking Association and numerous other partners, 18,000 euro had been raised for Dion to receive his prosthetics and physiotherapy from a facility in France. Green spoke to Channel 5 News at the ferry terminal ahead of his departure. Well, I'm excited to take on the challenge, you know. I know it's going to be a, a difficult task, but I'm looking forward to it with, uh, you know, all my heart. Yeah, I believe I can uh, accomplish this. Founder of the Keep Walking Association, Mark Hilly, says Dion must be prepared to put in a lot, lot of hard work in France. It, it, it's going to be a hard job for him. This, we are not going on holidays because he has to work a lot, a lot, every day for two months, four hours a day, five days a week and two months. So we are not going on holiday. It's going to be hard for him, but I will be around. The therapy is for two months, but after he has to work again, in case if he has problem, we can fix that and see the doctor before leaving. Executive Director of the DAPD, Natalie Murphy, says this is a milestone achievement for the association. When we started the first project in 2015, Dian was always um, on the list to assist. But as we have been saying, it was not possible to help him in Dominica. And so the partnership has grown to such an extent that I feel, you know, so overjoyed that we have been able to accomplish this goal that far. Dion is promising to be a role model for other disabled people when he returns on island in three months' time. For example, I don't, I don't, I don't um, tend to look at my disability as a disability, you see. So hopefully people will look at me and say, what? Look at him, you know, he's an he's a overachiever or he, he's confident, you know. So I look, I look forward to encourage people, you know, when they see my situation and they see what, what has been done for me, that they know that there is hope. The initial cost of his project was 80,000 euro, but had been significantly reduced through the help of various partners. Dominica joined 51 other Commonwealth member states in observance of Commonwealth Day on Monday. Commonwealth Day is recognized every second Monday in March. This year's theme, a peace-building Commonwealth. His Excellency Charles Savre delivered the Queen's Address during an ecumenical service at the Arawak House of Culture. That's news. Your sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Winners Volcanoes went down to Trinidad and Tobago Red Force by 172 runs in the West Indies Cricket Board Regional Four Day on Monday. Hope scored 105 not out for Trinidad, while Smith got the highest for Volcanoes with 49, while Shane Schillingford supported with 46. Final scores from that match Red Force 275 and 203 for 5 declared in 68 overs, Volcanoes 104 and 202 all out in 81.3 overs. 
On the local scene, Dominica Cricket Academy won on first innings points against the Grand Bay Credit Union Colts in the only game played in the Premier League of the Dominica Cricket Association on Sunday. The academy took first knock and reached 237 for three declared. Alec Athanas had a game high of 67, while Terrell Tuse and Jordan Alexander supported with 31 and 19 respectively. Courtney Anselm picked up two for 32. Set 238 to win, Colts could only amass 67. 65 for 8 at the end of the day's play. Lee Luizzi scored 22 and Micah 21. Moving on to football, where four teams have booked spots in the semi-final round of the Dominica Football Association's Division I League following games played over the weekend. The teams making it through are Mauro Soka Strikers, East Central, RC Doctors and Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy, Harlem United. On Friday, Mauro Soka Strikers sent Rachel's Point Michelle crashing out of the playoffs with a 4 0 win in the first match of a doubleheader at the Pori playing field. Duran Sebastian registered a hat trick for Soka Strikers, with Keanu Martin scoring one. In the second match, East Central edged out Poli Sports Club 4 3. Shamaya Dangenbell scored a brace for East Central, with Jed John Finn getting one. East Central also benefited from an own goal. Bernard Daru converted two for Police, with Marlon Hillier scoring one. In the other quarterfinals on Sunday, RC Doctors came from being two goals down to defeat Gully Dream Team 3 2 at the Pori playing field. Hezron Prince, Kerwin Lawrence, and Cheston Prosper scored for RC Doctors, with Kressler Benjamin and Hugo Riley scoring for Gully Dream Team. While at the Newton playing field, the match between Digicel Newton Juvenile Academy, Harlem United, and MV Maxano Bombers was blown off as Bombers arrived an hour and a half, half late at the grounds. The first semi-final is scheduled for Wednesday between East Central and Digicel Newtown Juvenile Academy, Harlem United. The second is carded for Thursday with RC Doctors up against the Mao Soccer Strikers. Both matches are set for poor playing field at 6 p.m. The final is scheduled for Sunday at Geneva at 3 in the afternoon. Meantime, there were two come-from-behind wins in action from the DFA Boys Under-15 Zonal League on Sunday. A central overcomers came from being two goals down to record a 3-2 win over Western Youngsters. Marcus Bridas, Tomaya Williams and Shamari Bob scored for central overcomers with Swan Henry getting both goals for Western Youngsters. The second match saw similar results as South Stars United also came from being two goals down to defeat North Strikers 3-2. Quentin Moise, Odell Laville and Majid Pelletier scored for South Stars with Tyreek Joseph and O'Malley Rabel scoring for North Strikers. And the Domlek Women's League has been rescheduled for Saturday at Newtown Playing Field at 3 p.m. following heavy rainfall on the scheduled day. Back with more cricket, we can tell you that the 2017 Massey United Insurance Under-20 Cricket Competition continues on Tuesday with three matches. At the stadium, we have Dominica Grammar School up against St. Mary's Academy. Over in the north, Portsmouth Secondary will play host to Dominica State College and Casabruce Secondary will take on St. John's Academy in Casabruce. The games begin at 10 a.m. Sports continues with netball where six teams will be vying for a spot in the semi-final round of the Sports Division Secondary Schools Under-14 Netball Championships on Tuesday. In quarter-final action at Margot, Northeast Comprehensive A will take on NECSB. Over at the Dominica Grammar School Hard Court, it will be Convent High School A against Isaiah Thomas Secondary at 4. And Pia Charles Secondary will come up against Casabru Secondary at 3 p.m. at the same venue. Finally, the impressive wake-up stars from Portsmouth, who have played undefeated so far, are one game away from reaching the finals of the Allen White White Oak Rum Domino competition. In game one of the best of three matches, the North team destroyed Dolphin from Scotland by 417 points. Final scores, wake-up stars 4,000, Dolphin 3,583. In the other semi-final, dangerous public enemies playing with only four players destroy league champions Rockers on Pebbles by 1,000 points. Final scores, enemies 4,011, Rockers 3,011. Both games of Game 2 will be played this coming Sunday. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. Let's check in now with the Met Office for the latest weather update. 
Good evening and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Annie Carita Joseph. The Atlantic High Pressure System re-established itself across the region today, resulting in theodopally cloudy skies over Dominica throughout the course of the day. Radar imagery indicated minimal shower activity over the Les Antilles during the afternoon. Conditions for tonight, fear to partly cloudy skies with a few brief scattered showers. And tomorrow, an increase in cloudiness can be expected, mostly cloudy skies and breezy with some scattered showers during the earlier part of the day. However, as the day progresses, a gradual reduction in rainfall and cloudiness can be expected. Sea conditions, moderate in open water with waves up to 7 feet. Taking a look at the extended forecast, again tomorrow Tuesday, mostly cloudy skies with some showers during the earlier part of the day and as the day progresses, a relative improvement in conditions. And Wednesday, an increase in cloudiness, so mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers. And on Thursday, fear to partly cloudy skies for a few brief scattered showers. Some breezy conditions can also be expected throughout the three-day period. Across the region tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some showers can be expected throughout the Lesser Antilles. On the international scene, overcast skies with snow in New York, partly cloudy conditions in Miami, London and Beijing, and partly cloudy conditions with rain in Caracas. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.14 a.m. and set at 6.16 p.m. For up-to-date information, log on to our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for viewing and join us next time. Good night. And to end the news, the headlines again. Local government reform about to go to the next phase. Hundreds of public servants expected to attend a solidarity rally of a government's latest offer of a wage freeze. And a call for farmers to maintain top quality production as government negotiates a supply contract for the Martinique market. Feel free to contact us at uh, news at mapping2k4.com. You can access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. To our viewers around the world, thank you for watching.